I cannot even contain my excitement. I am so excited, you guys. I just discovered how to create a killer animated Facebook cover photo for business pages. And today I'm spilling all of my secrets and showing you exactly how I did this. So I hope you enjoy this video. Hi everyone, Lane Napoli here, owner of Branding Addicts, and today I wanted to create a short tutorial for you guys and show you how I created my animated Facebook fan page cover photo. How cool is this, guys? It didn't take me very long to make, and I'm going to show you guys exactly how you can do it, too. Okay, so step number one, we are going to go into the image size that we're gonna be working in in Adobe Photoshop. So how I created this animated cover photo is I chose this width and this height and resolution of 300 pixels per inch. So I made the background transparent and then as you can see, once I have all of these specs typed in, this is where I start with. So I have my white and transparent background. I've just created a little white square layer or a rectangle layer over this. And then I have strategically placed all of these black little squares that I fill in with those images. So I'm just gonna kind of show you how I did that. So once I have these all lined up to how I wanted them to look, I then went to my Instagram page and I took screenshots or found the photos that I had saved on my computer and I created clipping masks, which is all you do is right here. Here, let me get this in frame for you. So you go to an image, I'll do, let's see, this one for example. All you do is when you drop the image into Photoshop, I can release clipping mask and then you'll see like it just, it's not directly the same size as all of the other squares. So how I do that is I have everything a specific size for the black squares so that everything looks cohesive and is the same. So I create a clipping mask just like so and I move all of the pictures accordingly to how I want them to look. And then I did this with all of the rest of my photos. Like with this one, I want to move over just a little bit. So it's all like fine tuning um, to how you see fit. Like I'll just move this one over a smidgen. And actually because I'm OCD, I'm just going to make that a little bigger. Okay, that, 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 that. And... That is my background. So I start with this as a full kind of graphic and I'm working currently in Essentials, but to create the motion graphic and the animated cover photo, we're gonna click over to motion in just a second. So once I have all of these, I like to kind of categorize everything. So I have all of those squares and clipping masks in a folder titled Images. And then I actually, I created this one myself. It's just a paint stroke. I just took some paint in one of my brushes and I made a dirty paint stroke and I uploaded that and digitized it in Illustrator and then just put a uh, cover overlay over it, which is one of my branding colors. So I decided to have that be the center, something that I can overlay text on because how cool is it guys that we can have these animated cover photos for our Facebook fan pages and now that we, we can have like customized messages that we can share with our audience and our viewers. So I love this feature for mark from a marketing standpoint. So I have that and then up here you can see I have my text. My texts are all organized in this little drop down folder and I will show you this more in detail in the motion sector of Photoshop, but as of right now, I'm just going to kind of show you how I structured it. So I have all of the images that are going to flash up as you saw on the Facebook cover in the first frame of this tutorial, but now, so I have this paint stroke and then I'm going to, I want this to operate as like a conversation. So hello, lovely, whoever is seeing my say, and then I have if you have, so if you see how I have strategically like placed these out so that in each frame is I will walk you through in the next step. Like this has to be moved over. 
It's going to take a little bit of fine tuning, but once you get the hang of it, anybody can do this if you know how to use Photoshop, guys. So if you have, and then these will all click off, reached, that'll click off, hashtag boss status, click off, and need some branding help, and I have these that go side by side in the animated frame, so ignore that. And then I have my little smiley face, laughy face, because that's just my personality. Then get in touch, and that is my simple, easy message that I have now uploaded and playing on a loop on my Facebook fan page for my business. So I end this whole sequence with my logo, bam. So it's a final um, impact to that audience member to check out my site, check out my business and see what I have to offer. So I'm going to hide this and hide that and hide that and we're gonna go over to um, motion. So as you see, we're gonna click here in the motion and something that I want to note um, for Facebook business pages is when you're viewing the cover photo on a mobile device, it's going to take the first frame of your animated video. So I've learned that the hard way by doing a couple trial and error. So what I have here for this first frame is you can see at the bottom it allows you to have a bunch of different sequences. And I can add a sequence with this button right here. Hey, let me make this a little... I can add a sequence by just clicking this button and it'll be another five seconds in the frame. So I'm gonna delete that and I'm gonna show you a quick one run through of what all of these look like together. These all compile the frames of my animated cover photo. So since on mobile devices, it only shows a still graphic of the video, I have the graphic that I want my viewers to see um, out of the whole entire video. So I have that as my first slide. So now on the second slide, and I have all of these at different speeds. So these ones are set at 0.5 seconds and each of them are 0.5 second intervals. And then when I get to the ones with text, I have them a second to 1.5 seconds and so on. So you need to tweak this and adjust this to how you want your viewers to where do you want their eyes to stop? Do you want them to be able to have a minute to read something? You know, all that kind of stuff goes into play and it's gonna have to be tweaked to your own custom design. So I'm just gonna play this right here with this little play button. So you can see I have all of these different sequences that pop up separately and I'm gonna show you how I do that as well. But as you can see how all of the text is in like a conversation typing format. And I have the pauses long enough to where my viewers can accurately read and understand what is going on. And boom, hit them with the logo. So I'm gonna stop here and I'm gonna go to this right hand side panel and show you. So this is everything that I had categorized in the essentials version. I have them out of the categories just so you can kind of see everything that has went into creating this video. So in this first frame, I have all of these checked off except the one that I want to be shown. So out of all of these things, you want them all in the same dialogue when you're editing, but everything needs to be checked off on the specific frame that you want the element to be shown. So for this frame, I have only one thing selected. For this frame, I have everything selected. Does that make sense? So for this frame, we only have this one thing selected and now I want a different image to pop up in a different location to get that attention of that viewer to be like, oh, that's kind of cool. What is that? What, why is that popping up over there? All that kind of stuff. So I have that one selected. Now that goes to this one, eight. I numbered all of these so that I keep track of which images are gonna be popping up where. So I have image eight popping up and then when we go to frame number four, I have image one popping up, so it, it just, that's how I put it into perspective, guys. Like I kind of just play with it until I really get a motion that I like and I'm comfortable with. And I kind of, from a designer standpoint, have everything, you know, happening at different um, intervals and time frames so that it visually all comes together at the end. So at this point now is where I've added my pink um, little brush stroke where my text is now gonna be incorporated. So we're gonna move up here. And for this frame, so frame number 11 is where I have my first line of text starting. And as you can see in this frame on the right hand side, all of these boxes 
are checked on so that you can view them. So you want all of these things to be staying in the background. So these need to be checked on through everything, all of these frames down here for the rest of the video. So for 11, we have, hello lovely, bam, saying hello to my viewers. And then for frame 12, I have that unchecked and now I just have if checked. And then for 13, I keep if checked right here. And then I check you. And then for 14, all these three are checked because I want this entire sentence to stay on that line. So I hope this makes sense, guys. It kind of just goes on from there. So frame 15, we have reached. Frame 16, hashtag boss status, frame 17, and so on. So as we get to the end, so this entire sequence is built off of 23 frames. I'm pretty sure the Facebook video length needs to be at least 20 seconds. So when you are creating something, just note to yourself that all of these seconds have to add up to over 20 seconds. I believe the time frame is between 20 and 90 seconds. So when I get to the end here, I just have the sign off for the Branding Addicts logo, wha-bam. And I did add in the get in touch feature, the arrow that points down to my get more info button on my fan page. Just kind of like a little call to action to any of my viewers. Now the most important part when you are finished with your animated cover photo and everything lines up and looks perfect exactly how you want it to show on your Facebook page, what I typically do is I will save this as a graphic and I will upload it to my Facebook fan page just to make sure that everything looks perfectly centered, perfectly symmetrical and that all of my content is in viewing range on my actual page. So once this is done, I'm going to click onto this frame and I'm going to show you how to export this. So I'm going to go up to the top here for exporting. I'm going to go to file and I'm going to go down to the export button and I'm going to click on render video. So once I click this, this little dialog will pop up and for me the .mp4 has been the best use for the actual cover photo. So if you plan to use this in any other areas, I would do a little bit of research on what file type that you need. Um, this all You can also convert this to .mov and that would be just going here to a QuickTime um, format, but I like the H.264 because it's a high quality video. And um, that is how I, I save my MP4 videos in order to be able to upload to Facebook fan pages. So all of this stuff is fine. And then I just hit render, boom. And right here I have it saved to my desktop. So once that is done, it's pretty fast too um, as compared to other video editing softwares that I've used. So it'll just pop up on my desktop and that I then I can just go into Facebook and upload my new cover photo. So I hope this was a pretty simple and easy tutorial for you guys. This is going to be a new service that I'm going to be offering on my site um, this September. So if you have any questions or want me to elaborate on a point, feel free to drop um, a comment below wherever this video is posted and get in touch with me. I would love to hear your feedback and see if there is a certain design that can be customized for your business. Have a great day, guys. Bye.